On June 25th, that is in a couple weeks, Tiger Belly will be doing our first live show at the Ace Theater in Los Angeles. Um, so please go to um, tigerbellylive.com. We want to see you there. It's going to be a night of music, magic, Mystery. games, extravaganza, a mystery. No. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm really excited to see you guys. Um, we can't wait. We know it's been a long time coming. We've been wanting to go on the road for a while. This is our first date. So hope to see you there. You can also see this young man in St. Louis, Missouri this weekend at the Funny Bone, June 4th and 5th. I'm so excited. Then I'll be in Houston, Texas at the Improv, June 10th and 12th. Then here locally in Burbank, California at Flappers Comedy Club, June 18th, just one show only west nyack new york june 25th through 20 24th through 25th then um, i'm taking july off and you can see me at, in august in springfield missouri um september oh, there's a bunch of dates just go online there's a bunch of dates i'm going to a bunch of places but these tickets will sell out the meet and greets have been just absolutely on fire i love meeting you guys i love signing merch for you i have new merch coming i also have a spotify show audio show coming out um, it will be premiering June 27th, so that'll be fun. I'll see you guys there. You guys, I'm coming to Washington, D.C., Austin. Oh, I think Phoenix, EsterOnIce.com, and also SleepoverByEster.com, and that's it. We love you. Follow me and all of us on TikTok. Follow us on TikTok. I have a new TikTok. I actually like big, do you like big ears on guys? I like when I, guys' ears are poked out a little. I like ugly dudes, so I don't think, you're, you're, <laughs> I don't think big ears are the wrong like, person. But whenever I hear someone like getting their ears pinned back, I'm like, let me see. Like, I understand if some Pin are like- back, people do that? Yeah, yeah, people get their ears pinned back. That's one of the OG. You get teased a lot in the Philippines for that. There's a word for it, it's called dunkug. And it's, it's like basically dumbo? basically when you have dumbo ears, yeah. What's, du is dunk a, a dunk like dunk. Asian No, it's it, it's elephant? It's are elephants? Shane? <laughs> My mom got her ears pinned back. Really? Yeah, what did they, did. What were they she, cute before? Um, um, she, I think, I thought, really thought they were cute before. Yeah. Jules has a little bit of an Audi, and um, I, she doesn't want to change it, thank God. She's just like, yeah. no, I like it. Oh, I, I like, like my, my little dents. It's cute to have your little dents. Yeah. Gen Z people like their, their ear issues. I might get a nose job that doesn't look like a nose job, though, because I cannot breathe through my, I'm like this bitch. <laughs> That's not a nose job, then. That's just a medical if I, if they, correction. If I came out and they gave me a nose job, I'd be so pissed. Annie, how about this? When I get it, get it at the same time. Let's do. I just want a straight shot. I just want to be able to breathe. Wait, what do you Wait I'll get that surgery, too, because I feel like I have a hard time breathing. Oh my god, we're gonna all end up looking Why was so that weird. Funny? You know what I was told by my doctor? <laughs> it was funny. I, don't yeah. know. I can't explain it. It's a hormonal thing. So it actually happens to a lot of women. As we get older, we start to have difficulty getting air through our nasal passages. It's harder because... to queef too. It's like all of our passages. It's, Wait oh, a second. I used to queef all the time. Annie. Where'd my queefs go? My queefs have arrived, it seems. <laughs> <laughs> it's like where where were you all these years? I can never queef. Now it's just that's all it is. Ew, how embarrassing on the sleepovers you didn't get to be queef girl. How embarrassing is that when I jerk <laughs> myself off, I'm queefing. Wait, you're are you fisting yourself? Are you like fisting Aaron there? And why are you queefing at sleepovers? No, I wasn't the sleepover girl, but you know the queef at the sleepover girl. No. no. Oh, because you never stayed long enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this bitch made her whole. You're such a based on a lie. Your whole life is based on. No, a lie. I'm obsessed with sleepovers because I always had to. Go now home you're in the old enough to like not get picked up. Yeah. You would still call Dave. Oh. <laughs> There's no way you wouldn't like 20 minutes into our sleepover be like. This was a mistake. I eat all my popcorn and then I'm like, <laughs> I have to go home. I know we do have to have one at my house because I have the popcorn machine. I'm ready. Which has not been cleaned in about six months. Wait, Still can ready. You, can you tell me about the queef and the sleepover Okay, over there girl? was always a girl that could queef on command. I might quicker like you through treats. Haddish. There was always yeah. a girl. Yes, Tiffany can do that. There was always a girl that could suck it in and and and. So this was just out. something like you do around the fire. Yeah, yeah, I was never. I put the fire out. That's what I do. <laughs> <girl. laughs> Wait, I have a question for the guys. Is, I'm not a good queefer. Is Carlos? No matter what your sexual identity is, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but what are your thoughts on queefs? Like, is is it make guys cringe when girls talk about it? No, it doesn't make me cringe. I've heard it. We said guys, Carlos, not you. <laughs> I've heard it 
in real life and I always kind of ignore it so that like just because you're like embarrassed the I don't want them to be embarrassed or anything yeah. I'm like it's natural but you know you created that queef yeah the queef is like a cute like I always a feel like queef? we should name it like it's our first kid you know <laughs> like we made this queef together like you packed that hair in how and, many kids and do I, I pushed have it out have? how many episodes did it take for us to spend the first 10 minutes of this this is our wholesome five <laughs> it's gonna get crazy after this <gasps> um I um yeah I think I have a, a queefing problem I oh, I was know. like, don't touch her. I thought you were going to be like, I feel like I have a lump in my armpit. I'd also Did like it not to... look like she was like telling us something bad? <laughs> but you know, that's why I got a boob job. My whole life, I've been obsessed with just grabbing boobs. Like the, even my own. I As mean... there's like <laughs> getting a boob job tomorrow. I grab my boobs so much Dang. and I love grab. I will... I will grab anyone's boobs That's anytime. How we met. I know. I, I like your nails. They remind me of me. I copied Haley Bieber in her stroke video. Oh God, isn't it just like <laughs> <laughs> there's just some girls I you just can't not copy. Wait, She's so, so Haley you're Bieber on... is like I've been on Haley Bieber forever. I know, I'm so obsessed She's with so, her. I saw TikTok really of something. her um um getting ready. It's a get ready with me right before Ju one of Justin Bieber's show. And she hardly put any makeup on and she looked flawless. And I'm like, I got to turn this How shit off. How old is she though? She's like 24. Yeah. 25 She's probably. just snatched to the heavens. Okay, but here's the thing that I brought her up to Whitney recently and Whitney was like, Esther, why are you obsessed with her? She's in like a religious cult. Did you yes, get... but who care? I don't okay. listen. We don't care. Okay, That's good. why she's so beautiful. The Lord loves her back. <laughs> <laughs> listen, if you love God, he loves you back. You know that, right? Like Ray Liotta is not talking about... God is he, and he's got the pock marks from hell. Okay, he's a <laughs> oh Satan God. worshiper, a Satan worshiper. That's my favorite line from Family Guy um, when they called his face like a decorative autumn squash. <laughs> <laughs> I used to do a, I used to do a joke about when the Chantex commercials were like big. I'm like, I like Ray Liotta on the Chantex commercials. He was like, I tried everything. I tried the patch. I tried going cold turkey, and I even tried putting them out on my own face. Really? <laughs> but even while I'm saying this, I actually do also like pockmark. So also, yeah. I'm Can teasing, I but I do like any little dent you have in your life. And we I'm love into. a celebrity who's willing to be self-deprecating about. Yes. But also, he's hot. He is yeah. hot. He's hot. He's rugged. It's like, and you could tell he got bullied in high school. Listen, I'm all about the boys that were bullied in high school. They have revenge. Mm -hmm. They want to fuck it out of you. You know what else, guys, who didn't have sex in high school? That's my fetish. Yes, but they have, but that's because they'll fuck anyone. <laughs> <laughs> literally, guys that wouldn't get laid, they literally will have sex. They can't, they can't say no. Oh my God. <laughs> you guys, um, something really tragic happened to oh, me. Oh no, why am I already laughing? Why am I smiling? Why am I so excited? I know. Oh, my best what? show. Is, best part of the show is when Kalila tells us something horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I like, another it, boob job. But I like it better when she just tells us something horrible without warning and she does it in like a happy voice. And we're <laughs> all like, really yeah, he punched me through the window. And then he <laughs> molested me when I was underage. What? <laughs> Look, listen, the reason I'm wearing something so loose today is because I got a sunburn in a place I have never gotten a sunburn before. And it's only in one spot I forgot to put um, SPF. And it's right under the, my right boob crease. And What's I, that like to have a boob crease? Can we see? Esther, can we see it's the sunburn? So bad. Yeah, is it peeling? Hold on. This is such a cute outfit. Oh my Hot. god! Do you see how bad it is? That is really bad. You got some titties on. It looks like you got. <laughs> it looks like you got chafed up. It looks like Titty. someone was trying to fuck that part of your boob. How did you get that sunburn? Um, I thought, hey, it's you know California summer, and I put, I laid. You know when you, how do you lay lay out? Under the sun. Or like, let's say you're at the beach. How do Face you lay down, down, ass up. I'm trying to get that asshole to even out with the rest of my skin. I don't know why it's such a different color. I tried a new move, and that was putting myself like on a baking sheet, like a turkey breast, <laughs> like this. <laughs> and then it lifted my boob up, but I guess I didn't put it under the lining of the two-piece, and it just took me out right here. So I, it, listen. So I wait, can't wear a bra. I can't wear a bra. I've never seen you wear a bra. Oh, that's right. You wear like kind of like sports bra bras, but wait. Speaking of under boob and that stuff, so, so I've been mean. okay. So Annie, <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> and for these reasons, I'm out. <laughs> so I have been having some lower back problems lately, and I I was like, I mean, they're not that big. <laughs> no, 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 no. She's like, we. She's like, my my neck myth has been debunked, so not to <laughs> say it's my lower no, back. Please, please, please. What for your fucking walks, bitch? That she's too huffing and puffing to talk. I knew the minute I said my back was hurting, I was just gonna get a beating. Okay, so I thought maybe like, cause this is a new in a new injury, so I'm like, okay, maybe it's from when I broke my toe. Like I'm I'm compensating in a weird <laughs> she's way. Still hanging onto that toe. <laughs> I call it the Olympic toe. I just realized what it's from and it's kind of sad it's like i realized that i have been 
like protectively like standing like this because my boobs are starting to sag and like basically I'm causing myself back pain by living in denial and sitting like this all the time. This is why you're getting roles. Finally, you're starting to get <laughs> cast and shit, bitch. <laughs> Stick those titties out. We're going to need more numbers. We need subscribers. Stick your titties out. When I relax, they're just like a little bit This like... is not how you're supposed to sit. This is actually healthy. Yeah, do not sit My like TMJ, me. My TMJ, when, okay, when I went to the doctor for TMJ, he did this whole CAT scan. Then he, he saw how I was standing. You have to have, be up like this and have your chin back a little. Mm -hmm. I know you're trying to poke your chin forward, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Esther, she is right. I think that part of the like. But maybe you need to hold your core in. It's so a core it's not... too. You okay. got to strengthen the core. But, um, but I have really bad posture, so I have nothing to say about that. Although I will ask you guys, it, do people really get their backs blown out during sex? Is that a real thing? What does that mean? It would have to be like doggy style and they're pounding your ass like, they're folding you a little bit. <laughs> you know, they're like folding your ass up. Like an accordion? Like, like, like an accordion. Like where your toes hit your neck, you know? Like this? Yes. No, not like fold, but like like folding you where your ass is gonna hit the back of your head. I was thinking more of like a compressed spinal cord where it's like <laughs> pushing in so hard that it compresses from one vertebrae to the next. You guys gotta get a hospital bed, I'm telling you. Or is it the guys blow their back out from, <laughs> from, from pumping yeah. it up? I know I've never done Did enough You just effort. say you guys have to get a hospital. You gotta bed. get. I've been telling you this for months. Nobody is like catching on. This is the wave of the future. You don't have to do anything. He doesn't even have to thrust. You <laughs> they gotta make. And by the way, hospital beds. Can you go faster? Can you guys thrust back. Yeah, if I'm in a good mood. <laughs> if I'm feeling charitable. <laughs> if not, I'm just well, the worst is when you when when you do when you're like all into it and then you fuck the rhythm up and then like all right uh, you yeah. just do it. <laughs> <laughs> the rhythm is gonna get you. <laughs> <laughs> the, rhythm, the rhythm of the night. It's more have, the rhythm of the late afternoon. I have a question for you guys. Um, have you ever been dropped by a friend or someone like over like not being fully in alignment with their political beliefs? <clears throat> I love when I just kill the energy. I know. It's like we were I, really I, having fun. There's a, there's a girl that I absolutely adore to this day. And um, she started kind of living in like, eh, I, get out of that I don't want to say it in a bad way because people can have their own beliefs about whatever. But she started to kind of go a little bit like anti-vax, like hippie conspiracy theory type person. Uh, the the yogi, yogis, yogis for Trump. I yogis love for yogis Trump. for yes. Trump. Yes. <laughs> I'm doing a bit um, about it and I love them. But really? It's That's so funny. So when did this happen? Like if you have dreads, you like don't believe in she's, abortion? Like what is going on? She's probably also one of those girls that like live off like volcano in like um, Big Island in uh, Hawaii, you know. Well, where, would like, love to go. Maybe you can yeah. take me. <laughs> <laughs> the day we leave, she's in a volcano. I'm hey, like, I will. I will bitch. We can go I to volcano. To, I need a redo. We are need we, to, but we'll go we to volcano enough? first. Are we brave enough to do a redo? I, I don't know. go tonight. Like We have to drag. But listen, now we know what we have to do we have to tie her ankles together and just pull her listen i will only go if it involves like real activity i don't I like wanted, shopping but shopping's funny okay shopping lasts two days but yeah. the first couple no, days i like going two volcano. hours it's two hours okay a spending limit and you humiliate each other you get each other <laughs> stupid outfits this is very easy but annie and esther my we came to i love this girl so much we've had such a great relationship over the last eight years like she is a part of my family so we both decided that we were just gonna never talk about it and we would shelf the friendship until the country becomes a little less like everything becomes a little less politicized yeah. so i'm just like i know her heart i love her i'm always gonna like look out for her but we're just not gonna fucking talk about it that's what my so my two uncles my mom's two brothers oh i got so excited you had gay uncles <laughs> <No>. <laughs> gungles gungles <laughs> they're one is like very pro-trump and one hates trump and they were getting into fights a lot and now they just they do they don't they just don't doesn't come up they mm. don't go there which i think is a really good way to handle it right because then then the machine isn't working to divide that's and yeah, I you find the things that you like liked about the person never had anything to do or about like, politics i've never met someone like wow our our political beliefs uh aligned like i never had any of my <laughs> fucking protests i went to when i was like made friends for life i never met one person i give a shit about <laughs> at all honestly i lo i don't even hang out with anyone i put that pussy hat on with i i, I bring this up because i I kind of got dropped by a friend over like political stuff a couple 
maybe like a year or whatever ago or whatever. It was like, I would say a year and seven months ago. I remember. <laughs> it was I don't Danny. forget. Um, and I'm like, I find myself like when it happens, you know, it's like, oh, everything is going on in the world, the pandemic, all the news. And then like now that it's been like a year and a half, I'm like, that She's is so loser. weird. Can I take this one? Because I remember the situation. She's yeah, but don't be like specific. But I'm going to. No, no. I want me to <laughs> This was what my take on this was someone wanted to like have control over you is what it seemed like. They wanted you to believe everything they believed. And the minute you were because a lot of people, when they get like really heated about something, they don't want to be challenged. And you not going along with everything that she wanted was challenging her. And she couldn't just tell you, no, we're all on this team that we don't do these things. And we don't. And it's just like you had no freedom in that friendship. Hmm. It is. Yeah. I. And then it's probably embarrassing for her to be friends with you now because she. It was dumb what you did. I think you're right about the control thing. It's like, because I, I try now to always say like, well, why can't we all have different, why can't I be friends with people who believe different things than me? I want, I want that. Like, I don't know, but I think you're right. It's like, you have to believe what I believe or you have to do what I say. Like, I but just. But it was like an authority over you. It was almost like she was, but I think you kind of have that too, right? Where you like, you kind of like come to people like looking up to them. Yeah. And then she really enjoyed that role. And the yeah. minute she realized like, oh, that's not like. A hundred percent all the time. It is making you feel some type of way. I'm shaking my foot. Your foot is no, shaking. No, it was sad. I know it's like sad. You know what it is? It's sad to not be friends with someone that feels like it's over something that is so stupid. But it probably wasn't that. It was probably something else. And I think it was probably like an underlying like control my thing. Breath. But you have to under <laughs> no, but it's not you. Even let's say it was your breath. Would that wouldn't that be her being a bitch and not you? Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like it's just whatever she was going through. It's not you. Yeah. You but, just like, she was able to like. That's true. I don't take it personally. Right. And I she don't. was using you as like a weakling that she could. And then when she realized that's not what you were, she didn't have room for a person that was going to like challenge her in her life. It has nothing to do with you. Hmm. I I, I would have to agree with Annie. Really? Yeah. On that. I think it has nothing. That particular situation from what you, I know of it has nothing to do with any political views. And would you want to be friends with someone right now that was making you feel bad about things you were doing? No, I yeah. don't. I don't. I don't want to feel bad that or like I... like pressure in your friendships? No. Have you Have you had this happen to you at all? I mean, I got friend dumped by every girl I marched <laughs> with. I got like a communal, like... It was like, it was just... You know there's like a mean girl situation going on when if one person has a problem with you, everyone unfollows you. You're like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Okay, <laughs> but I am so grateful for that. I really am because I was getting so worked up in that friendship and really didn't feel like it was a situation where I got myself into it. And I was like people pleasing with this one friend and like giving her so much of my, which I think you probably were doing with this other one, giving her so much like, oh, okay, do you want something? Like You're I was right. like getting her presents for her birthday, like things like things that weren't reciprocated. That's on me. That's yeah. not like up to other people too, but it just wasn't like a healthy even relationship and then it was the same thing like when I wasn't like the Louis thing came out if I'm being candid when the Louis article came out and I read it I was like I don't have the feelings that other people have about this mm -hmm. my feelings okay. are not like I don't I feel like when there are consenting adults that it's a different situation and I'm not saying it's chill and great what happened but right. I did not feel like it was appropriate during the Harvey Weinstein takedown to be equating what happened with Louis I just didn't I like I just have a different feeling but, from the things I went through. Yeah, but you know, more and more people are starting to accept the nuance of it all. Right. Hopefully, you know, like during that time, it's almost at, like it had to swing one way so mm -hmm. hard. And maybe it had to be that way at first. Yeah. But like my hope is that, you know, as time goes, we're able to see the levels of this game. It isn't yeah. just right. one, well, hey, me too blanket well, that we're like, hey, like it's just so I'm really like, hoping that we can have those nuanced conversations right. along the road without people being up in arms and saying like, you're a, a rape apologist. And it's like, no, I've been raped. Yeah, and I apologize for that. <laughs> I do, I'm very sorry. Formally. But that's kind of how I felt like with these girls. Like they had not been like fully raped. And then this girl said, <laughs> no, really, they hadn't. I'm like, I've been through a different situation than you. Like I really have like, and she said that um, she told someone else that I said, and I have no memory of saying this, but I think it's so hilarious. She said that I said to her, like, unless you can't be a feminist unless you've been raped, which I'm like, it doesn't sound like words that would come out of my mouth, <laughs> but it's so funny. And I'm like, I'm making a T-shirt. <laughs> but also it's like, aren't we comedians? Can't we like laugh and like, you yeah, guys. but I'm, I'm grateful. Like when I see this girl, we're fine. Like I had to do a lot of work because she would always stomp and be all mad around me. And I'm like, 
girl, we have the best job in the world. Like no hard feelings. I'm no interest in being friends with you. I'm glad we're not <laughs> hanging out, but you don't have to stomp and be upset. There's nothing to be well, upset about. Well, can I say something I that you, because you brought up the Louis thing and this was so long ago, but it's making me really realize why you and I will be friends forever because when that article came out, we did not agree and we fought. Yeah. And then we would be like, we'd be like, okay, we're not, I would say like, well, let's just yeah. not talk about it. But we stayed friends, yeah. we still hung out, we still laughed. I would never give a shit if what someone- But we did not my, agree. We did not agree. Yes, and it's not, and it's like, and I don't need you to agree. Like, I want you to feel whatever you feel mm -hmm. about a situation. I have no interest in, I don't need people around me that I like to have open discussions. And my opinion on things mm -hmm. can always change. Like, right. I don't, I was not in the room. I don't know what happened. I'm right. going off of what I read, you know? Right. So I don't know what happened. And I I can't, I would never sit here and say, I know how those girls felt or anything like that. All I can do is go through like my lens of what I did and how I felt about it. And, but I change my mind every day on things. I'm right. an evolving person. Also a thing that happens in that like culture as well is like a lot of people will be like, what, well, you haven't spoken out, you haven't spoken out. And I, Ugh. in general, I'm like, you know what? It just as you're talking, this came to me like, I don't need to have an opinion on everything because I don't really know or it's not my business. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I or just, you're still thinking about yeah. what you want to say. You don't yeah. need to smack it onto your like Facebook feed or your Instagram feed forever. Like, like the yeah. amount of people who fucking DM'd me and tweeted at me and essentially harassed me when like all that news about Delia came out. I'm like, why am I looped in? Yeah. I, what? what well, is, they don't. Because I know him. Because I met him. We're on jury duty. Listen, the amount of... Every day, one of our colleagues is accused of fucking molesting or raping. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like, it's like I'm on jury duty every fucking day. It's like, I already sat in court. I like, I, but, and it's like, and then I get all triggered and I'm like, yeah, like I'll see a picture of one of them and I'm all of a sudden I'm like, I'm putting on my suit jacket and I got like a briefcase. I'm like, we're going to court. But I can't, that <laughs> takes my peace. That takes my yeah. peace. So I have to wake up every morning and go, do you know what I choose? Do you know who I think is innocent or guilty? Me, I'm gonna just live my life and take care of myself because I, I can't. I will add to that though, that there is some type of internalized misogyny if you're placing the emotional burden on the women that are working around these men. Mm -hmm. So now, because you're playing jury duty and now these men have done what they've done, now the emotional burden is of on yes. you to have this very well thought out mm. opinion and to have that in a social or in a public platform that is exhausting, and then you're putting it back on women. Yes, mm -hmm. and, like, and I think that that in itself is a misogynistic yeah. thing to do, even from a woman. It is, it's usually from women. I love women, I love men. It's usually from a we group We know of you love women, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was a lot of women being like, you have to speak out, you have to, and it's like, I'm, I dropped out of college. Like, I can't make like a public statement that's gonna be wonderful. We, listen, her Twitter's about like pancakes, do you understand? <laughs> it's like, there's not a lot going on here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love Athletic Greens. You both got me hooked on it. Yeah, she drinks it before her light walks. <laughs> <laughs> but it is crazy. You So you drink it every morning yep. on an empty stomach, right? Mm -hmm. And it, it, the whole idea is like it takes the guesswork out of like having to realize, oh, I ate this vegetable. It's like you get all the nutrients you yep. need in one drink. Right. And if you're somebody who does not necessarily love the taste of vegetables mm -hmm. and not something that's a part of your diet every day, this is just an easy way to drink something delicious and to get all of the nutrients you need. And it's just, it tastes good. And then you just have started your day well. And it's, I like, I take little um, travel packets with me on the road. Yeah. So I just, because I'm always on the road and because it's just hard, like with all of the jet lag and stuff, I just like to have consistency in some places. So athletic greens are always. And with one my delicious jam. scoop of athletic greens, you're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, and whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. And this blend of special, in this, sorry, this special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging, all of it, which is really important and nice to get that all in one place. Because otherwise, then I spend all day being like, oh, did I get enough nutrition? Did I, am I healthy? Like, this just takes it all. And if you have certain food sensitivities or preferences, um, Athletic Greens is keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, and gluten-free, or gluten-free. You have that option. Yeah, and it costs less than $3 a day. So you're investing in your health and it's cheaper than a cold brew habit. Also, when you subscribe, you get a one-year supply of vitamin D and it comes in this dropper. It's my favorite form of vitamin D I've ever I'll had. I'll give yeah, you and some vitamin D. You don't like mine? I prove it. 
<gasps> also, like, I think my doctor told me that most people don't know that they're actually deficient in vitamin D. I know we live in California, say, for instance, everyone's like, oh, we have vitamin D, but most people aren't getting enough vitamin D. And with Athletic Greens, they give you this free little dropper full, not dropper full, they give you this bottle of vitamin D, and I take it every day. And I feel like it supports so much of um, the goodness inside me. Yeah, it's yeah. really easy to consume it that way. You guys, right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially heading into flu and cold season. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. It's so easy. No need for like a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one year supply. Ooh, she lit up when she said free. I so love that the word free. <laughs> free one year supply of immune supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash Tuesday. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash Tuesday to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. You guys need to see the movie Men immediately. Why? Is it, it is like, okay, so it's a oh. horror movie and it's like, I don't want to give away anything, but there's undertones of like a theme of like microaggressive um, toxic masculinity. I mean, it was, I was livid afterwards. I was livid. <laughs> I was like, the whole time I was like smacking Todd. I was like, they do do that. <laughs> and then they do that. And it's not all men, you know, but they have these different types of misogyny that you hit. And it was just like, it was just so, such a weird, crazy, fun. I love the poster. It looks like, so good. Like creepy, but we're all laughing. Like weird things were happening. It was, Did and you it like was, go see it? Yeah, it was really fun because I usually don't like going to the movies anymore, but I realized I have to go during the day so I don't fall asleep. You guys. It um, was great. Um, we're going to switch the switch from men to women real quick because something, I don't know if it's magical, but something really life-changing happened to me um, this past weekend. And I'm not just saying this. This isn't queer baiting. Like from the bottom of my heart, <laughs> I fell madly in love with a stripper. Esther, are you okay? I relate, so I feel good. I I have fallen in love with a stripper. It was so <laughs> embarrassing because after the private dance, she what? was like, because during you know what they'll they'll say anything, right? Like when they're yeah. dancing for you. But she was saying things like, "Hey, like maybe we should go like dive and like surf and stuff." And I believed her because it was two very specific yeah, things I that I too. like. I believed you too. <laughs> and then and then <laughs> afterwards, she didn't ask for my information, so I was like, "Oh no, it was just part of the dance." So you, I did the most the cringiest, most embarrassing <laughs> thing. I pulled up my Instagram, which I had just deleted, by the way. To show her, I was like, "Hey, if you want to find me on Instagram, just to show like my blue check mark, so maybe she would contact yes. me." Been there. We've all we've all done that. We've <laughs> all done it. You guys and nothing crickets. Really? And she was. Uh, I don't know what it was about her, but I was just like, I had stars in what my eyes. What did she eyes. look like, like? She was. What I club think she was? was it? I don't want to say. Okay. Okay. Because <laughs> it's gonna. If I give her the description, yeah. I think she's um. Okay. Um. So she was, I think she was kind of, I think, I think she was, she looked to me like she was like, oh, you half got sunburned black, down there half too. white. Um, she was just, she was, I think you would find her really attractive, Carlos, <laughs> oh, but yeah. her face, it was her face. Don't you think it's going to be easy for her to give birth? Look at this. The baby would just slide out. <laughs> oh yeah, out. I'm just going to hug a tree and just <laughs> fart one out. Would you guys want to have a home birth? No. I don't know why I'm asking you. <laughs> I um, feel like I would want to plop you. it out in a, in a puddle. <laughs> um, I think teach it to swim right away. <laughs> third or fourth, if I got to number three, I would probably um, let one slide out of me at home. This is Carlos one, trying to pretend he's straight. He's like for this bang bang. <laughs> one time, uh, me and Dave went to a strip club in Vegas, and like I walked around and picked out a stripper to give him a lap dance. And afterwards, I was like doing everything I could to Google and like with her fake name, and <laughs> I like eventually <laughs> kind of found something that was like her on like a. A, a Playboy offshoot website or penthouse or something. And yeah, I'll always remember her. It's, she does not remember you at all. <laughs> That's for sure. Unless there's a restraining order and then she has to remember you for her own safety. But there is a heartbreak involved in that because like you're well, so did intimate. You, did you like plan your like future with her in your head? I really did. I was like, we're going to be on the beach together. We're going to like dive. You know and, what like, you need? What? You need wing woman. 
yes. women. You need us and to what go. Would, okay, what would you do I'm in like, that situation? Eat her out. No, I'm like, no, no. <laughs> eat her out or you're not gonna dip. Me and Annie are the perfect <laughs> duo. We we will just make fools of ourselves. We'll Let annoy me. her so much that she has to eat you out to get away from us. <laughs> you guys, I was so sad the next day I got an IV infusion. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I never get one those. for emotional. Just for my emotions. I was like, I'm feeling really, really down today. And so I was like, oh, I'm gonna call Jerby. We gotta get we should get IVs one episode where they're just giving are you okay with needles? I can't yeah, imagine. Hell why. yeah. No, no, no. I'm Hell good. yeah, I am I get tattoos now. Because we I, there was a McDonald's in the children's hospital I went to, so every time I went we got McDonald's. Were you, were you the clown? What were you doing at the children's <laughs> hospital? <laughs> I was, were you the Patch Adams? I was a very sick kid, not to brag, but um, no, I, I loved shots and stuff. Were they just like, she's faking yeah. again? <laughs> Wait, Esther, um, what age did you um, age out of the children's hospital? Because usually it's like- Yeah, you could probably still go. Yeah. So, you know, I remember like when I turned 18, my general doctor was like- my Your genital doctor? My that's, what, that's what ours- <laughs> My cheek. <laughs> <laughs> my, I wasn't molested by my doctor. My pediatrician was just like, you know, you can still come for a few years. You're 18. You can still, we can transition, make the transition Oh my slow. God, they fell for it. They thought you were weak. <laughs> but then when I, I moved to LA, so, but I still see the same doctor I've been seeing since I was 21 here. Dr. D Shendrakar. Mine is Dr. Villiamore. <laughs> He's passed, but. Oh. And yeah. now we go to the I same one, but I haven't gone to him in a year. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I go to mall doctors now. Well, you go to my doctor. <laughs> I know, but I, he's, you know, my doctor. <laughs> oh, I have some updates. I But I want to talk about lesbians first, okay, now okay, that we're yeah. talking about it. Because I was thinking about how much I was having, like, 90s appreciation. I was at Whole Foods the other day, and they play literally the best 90s music. And the number one 90s music is lesbian 90s music. Oh, a thousand Indigo percent. Girls, Melissa Etheridge. Have you heard heart thrown into a fucking – you yeah. can feel, like – the pussy quivering out of their mouth. Mm -hmm. Like they like come to my window. Lilith Fair. Lilith Fair, all of it. Tori Amos. Tori Amos. She's not a lesbian, uh -huh. but she is one, you know. But yeah. I was thinking, and then it got me thinking of my favorite kind of like folky jewelry mm -hmm. from back then. And I got, I found it, okay? And I want to bring it back before, because I know we're kind of sliding into the 2000s now. And before, I want to bring this back before the 90s are gone. My hands are ready. I tried to get Esther a silver one, but... They just ignored me <laughs> and gave me gold. <gasps> ear humpers. Do you remember these? Yes. No. They, you, they, they're they ear cuffs. They're like little men and or women, I guess, in this case. Wait. Yeah, I want mine to be a girl. And they go <laughs> and they cling to your ear. They cuff Wait, your ear. Wait, this is so cool. Yeah. Aren't this. they awesome? They're so good. And they just hump your ear. I didn't know this was a 90s thing. Yeah. Esther, do you not know your... Uh, as a as a as a woman who loves women, do you not know your '90s lesbians? Not really, no, because I was too young. She was in the children's hospital. I was downloading <laughs> illegal pictures of naked women on my AIM or whatever I had. AOL. Isn't it good? I love it. I know. I try to get you silver, but no, I love I love mixing metals. Mixies. Um, but I was just thinking, like the just the. Have you ever heard? Okay, so you know um, the song by the Dire Straits, Romeo and Juliet. Mm -hmm. Yes. So there's like a million versions of that. Yeah. The Killers have mm -hmm. one, they, but the one by the fucking Indigo Girls is crazy. It's number one. It's the best version. Annie, can you help me have this hump my ear? Yeah, when I think of nineties, so. I think of like Spice Girls. I guess maybe is that like late nineties. Yes. Yes, that is okay. late nineties. Mm -hmm. That's me and Carlos's okay. childhood. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thank God you had a sister, so he did all the girl things. <laughs> yeah, but I, I would guess well, like <laughs> Carlos can do the girl things. The fine. the equivalent of that late nineties, um, that is probably from the Little Fair. The remnants of it is probably like someone like Fiona Apple. Ah, uh, we okay. So I've been going to Amoeba Records every weekend, and by the way, I'm a celebrity there it's crazy <laughs> that we have crossover records and amoeba and trash tuesday go together it's not what you want to hear i listen it's yeah. crazy I, the only person i know who goes there's dave's dad <laughs> and well, bobby well okay bobby's a big amoeba guy. i mean we've been having like the best time going there we got the record player from the the uh from comedy store comedy 50th store anniversary and so we've just been going every week and it's been like and i'm just i really want a fiona apple so bad I want, um, what's the name of the album where it's just her face? Mm, I don't remember. But what we got was we got the Magnolia soundtrack. I got a limited edition, $100. I was the movie? easily dropped it. The soundtrack. So and the soundtrack good. has all these Amy Mann things. And it thanks, <gasps> they thank Fiona Apple oh because God. Fiona Apple was dating him when he made the movie. 
and was like his muse. Magnolia soundtrack, one of Bobby's favorites too. It's Amy mm-hmm. Mann is just, yes. it's, it's so like, uh, just even the ending of that movie. I'm going to go, I'm going to go on the 18th, I think, to try, well, I shouldn't be telling people this, but they're having, it's like um, record day or something. So they're releasing things that have never been released. And I want to get the um, Royal Tenenbaum soundtrack. Because that's never been released on. Vine it's one of my yet. favorite movies. Any Wes Anderson film is probably even the ones that aren't good 10. are good. Mm? Even the ones he you know the- who I befriended was um fuck what's his name? The reason I don't remember your name is because you fucking unfollowed me, bitch. Uh, <laughs> the kid I did a movie with him, um, The Long Dumb Road. Tony, he would play the little kid in the um what was the one in the hotel? The Which Wes one? Anderson Hotel. The, the oh one in the kid from Spider Man. Yeah, Tony. Tony Rev- oh, Rory. the guy from the the Budapest one. He's yeah. funny. Yeah, no, he's great. He did not follow me. Yeah, that's so funny. Maybe maybe Annie is like too far for the Tom Holland Zendaya mm. Spider Man world. Maybe, maybe, but that's a good thing. I I, they'll grow up. They'll grow up one day. Yeah, come to me. <laughs> um, you guys, Carlos came to the Midwest with me, and he spent the weekend at my parents' house, and I think. This third, this was the second time he's come and actually be there, and he, we were there longer. And I think my parents officially don't respect him because they were really fully themselves. <laughs> and are you okay? Like, I feel like you could have a lawsuit against. I guess me. that is the case. Like, if they respected me, they would have been like on their best behavior. Yeah, they were on their worst. Was, it, was your dad doing bits? No, that's like respect level. Like, not respect level is like criticizing my order at a restaurant or oh i love these people maybe they just respect me so much they're treating you like shit to like impress me <laughs> <laughs> well carlos ordered chicken tenders at portillo's and the whole time my dad was roasting them he was like oh I... does that come with a toy are you are you eating that because that's they're... what skinny people eat no and that's then... funny though that's but, no he's just being funny no totally he was just being funny but, but, but... also to go to portillo's and just get chicken tenders <laughs> is sacrilegious like, it is weird but we i the own... next day and he got the beef sandwich yeah okay, but i didn't God. eat all of it but i also if i go to the midwest and there's like crap in front of me or the south or anywhere it's like i need to order like the salad or yes whatever i've been ordering be. very healthy at comedy clubs and they look at me like i am absolutely crazy what do you get Just i do chicken it. tenders and like a salad i don't even do the tenders anymore because i'm not this is like here's the thing this okay the egg freezing diet mm-hmm. leading into my tmj diet has actually been so good for me because i do need a doctor to tell me to do well like i do because otherwise i'm like it's fun to eat bunions like and i do that's my heart like my heart is like white trash eating like it's fried cheesecake bunions. do you know what i mean like this is i'm from philly we like cheesesteaks we like cheese whiz like it's just it's like a part of my identity that i'm breaking right now because i do want to live long i want to be healthy every time i realize like every time when i was like um thought I was dying on the toilet when I thought I was Elvising. I knew I wasn't going to die because I really have this vision of myself like being the most amazing elderly woman, like same level of annoying, but like just old and light, hopefully likable. But just like I see myself peaking in my like late 80s, my early 90s. So I just have that image. So I'm like, I do want to do the things that prepare me for that yeah. life. I do um, want to like not. So you've almost died on a toilet. Yeah. You've almost died on a toilet. And I think get on the toilet, Kalila. We just start poking her. (laughs) For a long time, people made fun of Elvis for dying on a toilet, but I think it is, you know, a a good final resting place because, like in the Philippines, we don't call them restrooms. We we don't call them bathrooms. We call call them CRs. Rest and peace rooms. No, we CR. We call them comfort rooms. Um, And I think that when we're feeling ill or whatever, it is a very natural thing to go find a toilet to die it is comfortable well you know how dogs go off into the woods we just go to take a shit our final defecation (laughs) i think so i think there's something to that it's not a bad place like it's you're it's comfortable it's familiar like i'd rather be there than many places by the way i'm having the image of randy trying to go into the woods and me being like (laughs) you're dying in my arms um carlos also came with on a drive-by past my ex's house. How's the house Ooh. looking? Oh, Does it yeah. have a no Esther sign? <laughs> Is the color the same? Have they changed the sightings? Well, I wasn't there 20 years ago or whatever. <laughs> but it was weird because we were almost at Esther's house and then she was like, wait, we have to go back <laughs> and like do a U-turn and go on another loop to Are, find this guy's there house. Too? Yeah, my parents. My mom they, you make them go too? Oh yeah, my mom drives every time. Esther. And dad in the front seat. You we know? were in the back oh, seat. There's so a cute. book about You're this. Enabled. That's all you are is enabled. That's what all your problems are. That's 
also Carlos pointed out that I want to share this. He, you, what did you say that you can see why I am the way I am? Yeah, it's like, well, you can say it. This is also <laughs> enabling. Say it. <laughs> that my, it's like, you can't even try to help because you almost get in trouble. Like my mom, right? Tell them. Was Carlos like, no, I'll fold her laundry. And then she no, was like, literally no, I like her mom was like weirded out by the way I was doing things because I was doing it so messy and I wouldn't let her help me. Mm -hmm. But like Esther isn't like allowed to do anything. Like we had coffees. All right. And like she took our coffees and dumped them out and put them in the trash can. But it's mm. like we weren't even allowed to do that. So it's I can see how Esther can be really lazy <laughs> or need like 50 assistants because like her mom raised her to not even do things on her own. She's but like, you know this already. And this could have been fixed like 15 fucking years ago. Okay. <laughs> oh, I like when Carlos bites back. <laughs> <I know. laughs> um, that does make sense. And I think that I can relate slightly because while my mom was, she was a helicopter mom, right? Yeah. Very like abusive and whatnot. I was not allowed to feed myself with my own spoon mm -hmm. until I was 13 because it was a control thing. So I was spoon fed until I was about 13. Wait, yeah. that's serious. That's child abuse. Yeah. That's very serious. Yeah. So I was it the same spoon she was whipping you with? <laughs> yes. I could not choose what I would eat. It was going to be six tomatoes, pork chop with rice, a big glass of milk every morning. And I had to eat every morsel. Pork so, for breakfast? Yes. Yes. But very island style. But um, because she was, I was her racehorse, right? So I had to, she was like, you're, you're, you're an athlete. You have to be taking in these many calories. But what happened was it was a built in, um, um, she rendered me useless yes. as a teenager for a very mm. long time. So what happened when finally I was in America and she was like, oh, you got to do shit for yourself. I'm like, I don't know how. Yeah. You think I'm going to clean my rabbit shit all over my room? I have a pet rabbit. I'm like, yeah. no, I don't know how to, I don't know how to move. I don't know. I have no autonomy. Does any part of you miss that? Because I the hear. The pet rabbit? <laughs> I know I, the rabbit poop. <laughs> like. Being spoon fed, I know that's like an extreme, but it does You're sound so jealous. <laughs> like someone picks out all the food for you. Like you make no decision. Well, like do you miss you guys. I don't no. want to bring up. I don't want to bring up the colonic again. But you know you can just get the shit sucked out of your ass, right? <laughs> it takes all the good flora out too. But. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to. I, I miss my good flora. No, Esther, that makes sense for me because I had a very. Um, big crisis as a teenager because I felt number one like I didn't just didn't know how to do anything so I doubled down and I made sure that I learned to do everything on my own by the time I was 17 I'm like I'm moving out I'm getting my own place I'm paying my own rent and I got out of my and then they just home. like moved in with you yeah like great we're moving in with you <laughs> cool we have a new place because <laughs> I was then aware that I was like I haven't been allowed to do anything yeah. make any decisions for myself including like if I would fold a t-shirt she would undo it and then refold it that's my mom too know. exactly my mom Mom wouldn't do that, but she would try to get us to do chores and we'd be like, nah, bitch. And she would just do it. She would always make like chore charts and then, but she would end up doing anything. And then I realized like I just had a really good hypnosis session that like has just literally cured me of every self sabotage in my life. It's so insane. I realized what it was in the session. When I was a kid and I would get, I was such a perfectionist just from like, Honestly, it was like verbal abuse when I was a kid, which I totally forgive my dad for. I forget, you know what I mean? But he was very, very, very hard on me and very, very verbally abusive, not physically. And so I got in my head that I'm like an idiot or whatever. So then when I wasn't doing things perfect, it would like reaffirm that. And I remember um, if I wouldn't write, like if my handwriting wasn't neat, I would like stab the paper. I would get so mad at myself yeah. and for not being perfect. And then so my mom would see me like having these like internal battles with myself when I started like at the level of writing papers, like fifth grade, sixth grade. And she was like, I would get to a place where I'd be like, it's not perfect. Like, the first line wouldn't be perfect. And I would start to freak out. And my mom would be like, want to save me. And she'd be like, all right, I'll sit with you and we can write it together, which I was like, OK, good. Then it's someone like helping me kind of be calm. But then she would just rewrite the whole thing. Mm. She would just write it. And then I never got to feel like the joy of like finishing a project mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And I know it was coming from a sweet place. She was just trying to help and kind of like calm the waters and stuff. But I realized it really taught me like I just had low self-worth in my like ability to get work done. And now I'm like, I'm remembering I used to be like a fucking poet when I was a kid. No offense. Um, <laughs> but I would like when they would give me my word, my vocabulary word, mm -hmm. I would always like write a poem yeah. or something. And and I liked writing. And I and now I'm like remembering that I had like joy in that. And I'm I have just had like the best week of writing jokes and going through all my shit and it's just crazy. It's just so weird how like something that you're told when you're 
for yeah. can stick with you for so long. Yeah. Having debt is very stressful. How, what do you know about debt like I know? Well, I don't know it like you know it, but I was broke for 10 years before <laughs> this podcast started. Um, I shared a studio apartment with um, a woman, and I believe at one point you were going to join us. So <laughs> don't come for me. Um, and it can be hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel when you have high interest debt. And sometimes it can be even harder to ask for help. And that's where Upstart comes in. Yeah, I've definitely been in those places where I have so much debt in so many places that I'm just like, I'm going to just ignore this until it goes away. And that is not, it doesn't actually go away. Doesn't help. <laughs> really bad. But it's human nature to not want to face a difficult, hard thing. So we put it off, but it, it's that's not helpful. Upstart powered personal loans can help you pay down high interest debt all online with simple and easy to understand payment terms. Upstart has helped over 1.8 million customers on their path to financial freedom. Whether it's paying off credit cards, consolidating high interest debt, or funding personal expenses, Upstart can help you get one fixed monthly payment with a clear payoff date. And look, Upstart knows that you're more than your credit score, thank God, because mine was 69, weirdly enough. <laughs> well, then you are your credit I score. I know. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> so rather than looking at your credit score alone, Upstart's model considers other factors like your income, employment, or other information provided in your loan application to find out a smarter rate for your loan. And it's really convenient. You can check your rate in minutes for loans between $1,000 to $50,000 without impacting your credit score. You can even receive funds as fast as one business day after accepting your loan. You guys don't wait and check your rate today at upstart.com slash Tuesday. That's upstart.com slash Tuesday to check your rate today. Don't forget to use our URL to let them know we sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. So go to upstart.com slash Tuesday. I can't even imagine how bad of a mom I could be. Like, it's like, I don't even go there. When people, like when I was pregnant, people were like, oh, you'll be such a good mom. I was like, what are you talking Who about? Who said that to you? Who lied to you? <laughs> like three <laughs> people kidding. said that. I was like, out of the thousands I told, no. <laughs> but yeah, I fully am prepared that parenting will be uh, not great. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that that is an honest, like, I when people are like, I'm going to be the best mom, I'm like, already you're going to be the worst. That's a really bad sign. Like, well, I yeah, will say the sign. reason I'm going to be an elderly mother is because <laughs> I was not up until the past couple of years even able to allow myself to imagine having kids because I was so angry. Mm. I had so much anger in me and I was getting so like triggered so fast and stuff that I was like, I can't do this to a kid. There's no, Whoa. like, how would I, how would I not take that anger on my kid? That's what I learned from my parents, you know? And they now have like, they grew out of it. You know, my mm -hmm. parents did work on themselves. They grew out of it. They're, they can handle their anger now. So I had that example at least to realize that I could work on myself. And then when I really realized I had a problem and that's why I'm like never angry at like, really that angry at my exes and stuff because it's like, whatever toxicity they brought out in me was like a good lesson for me to learn mm -hmm. you know it was like i purged some stuff and was able to work on it carlos but god damn have... those kids would have been fucked up if, same if i got if i didn't <laughs> shmush more i got uh, <laughs> my results of my embryos what do you mean how many do we have what species we have four they're human <laughs> mm -hmm. not yet one is not like not fully yet. good mm -hmm. okay um, Isn't there like three tiers? Like, can I have good, the, you don't know, and like not that good? There was can like I have a mosaic the not good or something. One? Will yeah, you give it to me? <laughs> yeah, but here's the thing. And then there's three that are like, like really Rock good. So stars. the good ones are 65 to 75 percent. They'll work. Okay. And then the other one is 35 percent. So, but they are all boys. Shut wow. up! Boys. Shut up, Annie! All boys. I hope Shut they're gay. Up. I hope they're all. Gay. I do too. You I want all boys? And I hope that they're comfortable saying it. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I can bully it out of them. This is crazy. Like, oh my God. Like, so it's a boy. It's so yeah. real. We know. Yeah, there's That's no, so like, real. it's so weird. Well, you could always go again, but. But then, no, I'm not going to go again. Boy, but then boys. I was thinking about it and I was like. Let's I'm, have them all today. I know. <laughs> But then I was like, maybe I should donate, like, because it is weird. I feel like to just have them, so maybe I should like donate one to a gay couple or something. Oh, <laughs> would you really? 
give one up? I th- I I'm thinking about it just because ethically the whole thing feels very like a little bit weird to me. Even though I know it's not like a full thing yet or whatever, but it feels like if there are people that are like really dying to have a kid, but I guess they could adopt too. I don't know. Well, people sell. Don't people sell eggs and embryos all mm-hmm. the time? Like that's not. I feel like it's just weird territory I'm in, and I, I never thought I was gonna make enough money to even be here. And now I'm like past it, and I'm like, what did I do? I mean, I'm happy with it, but how does how- Todd feel? He's really excited. Ah! Yeah. Wait, but how would you feel if, like, let's say you you gave one of these? It would away. be so weird. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I don't know. I can't. I would feel weird too. Like, especially if you did it before you guys had your baby. Oh, I wait. I couldn't do it before. Wait, I I, I kind of would just to see. Yeah, like you know, just pick. Hmm, let's like, test actually, it out. I want that one. Can I have a bag? Yeah, yeah. you raised it cute. It dresses good. Imagine <laughs> if you gave one and that one's like the cute one. The well, they give you like when you're before you do the procedure, you have to sign all these things and. And I and they had an option where it's like you could leave your embryos in the in the Look case that this. Todd I and I both die. Because well, it's weird. It's like a weird pre. I know it's so it? real. When uh-huh. It's so real. And then I'm like, I was watching Randy like. Randy likes to like hump his toy, but he wants to be touching me too. And I'm like, oh my God, is this my future? Like little jerk off boys. There's just gonna be little crunchy socks <laughs> everywhere. You are a boy mom. I'm a boy mom. Yes, I you, didn't yeah. be, but I Well, am. no, you're a boy dad. <laughs> <laughs> Tester. <laughs> <laughs> my son. <laughs> Well, congrats on your boys, Annie. Isn't that so crazy? Um, Carlos, I wanna. I have so many questions for you that have. Can I have the bug? I want to eat it. Shut up. Mm. Yeah, I want to bring it out right now. And during banana break, banana break is for feeling good. Oh, you want it on your banana? I'll eat it after banana break. Okay, well, I okay. Need extra banana. okay. Um, Carlos, Kalila. I have questions for you. Yeah. Um, Are you gay? I realize <laughs> that, you know, you're kind of this guy who's always just been gay. the sweetest. Gay? <laughs> the sweetest, most accommodating. You're like an emotional support animal for a lot of us. For right? women. Like, you're not trying for to me. fuck them. Yeah. But, um, you're around. It's like, you're kind place. of into, like... Very much a safe harbor. A different gender. How yeah. long were you married? Yes. <laughs> yes. This is coming up because I told her how your dad asked <laughs> us at Holy Free Holy. Like, let's get personal, Carlos. What well, happened? You know what? Let's get personal. My dad okay. literally goes, so why did you get divorced? And then I said I was too high to talk about, which I was. So I took like 300 milligrams. <laughs> I was like floating. What happened in that marriage that you had to take 300 milligrams? <laughs> what happened? I... Here's, I feel like if you're married to me, you get everything paid for. But Wait, what? If you're like, I was just like, where's my payment? <laughs> I'm your work wife. But if you're I just like him. a hot girl who I had a crush on and we dated, like three or four years in, I'm gonna wanna go downstairs and like watch TV by myself because mm. I don't really like you anymore after four mm. years. How old were you when you were married? Why did you um, decide that she was the one you wanted to marry? How long were you together before you proposed? We were together six months before I proposed. Whoa. Yeah. Can, can I speak actually mm-hmm. as someone who was his best friend? I was, was? like. Was? <laughs> well, we're best. We've been. But it we've sounds been, like I died and you're talking about <laughs> me at my funeral. We've been very close for a long time. And I remember like a few of us being like, Carlos is getting like, it's he's it just it felt strange to me. He's young. It was new. Anyway, sorry. Keep going. I think it's like when you're young and. I think when you're like under 30, you can just like, you feel like you can do whatever you want if you have like access to funds to do it. And uh, he's got rich boy problems. Exactly. <laughs> so he was th- born. You felt strong about her. I did, but I should have just been her boyfriend for like two years. And but then... she said yes. And was yeah. was it a big wedding? Was it a was shotgun it a big wedding? yes? Was she into you proposing? Was it a was big yes? Out? That's mm-hmm. a great question. No, it's real. Yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um. I think it was a medium yes, actually. She was like, oh boy. How it did wasn't you like an oh boy. Because does anyone, okay, this is what I want to know too. Like, does anyone propose to their girlfriend and the girlfriend say no and then they just carry on? Like, yes, do they John ever DeWalt. just like really? stand up? They just stand up and they're like, all right, let's go get pizza. I guess I'll go return this ring. Do you know John DeWalt proposed yeah. to his his girlfriend? She said no and they stayed together and then like you're, you, they, they're I like to, that. They're married now. I know. Yeah. I'm like, I was so impressed That's with her. That's insane he stayed with her. Well, no, it's more like 
I don't think I'm there yet. Or but by yeah. God, if I said that 10 years in, oh my God, that would be a yeah. horrible thing. But if let's say I got proposed to in six months, I would be like, hey, like, like, I love you, but this is fast and I'm not there yet. I really like where we're going. Can we, you know, can we rain check? Yeah, but that's <laughs> like a mature response. Like when two parties aren't mature, how? they're not going to make a mature decision. How okay. did you propose? I actually don't know that. Inner Prius. Oh, okay. What? Yeah. With, with inner the... penis? <laughs> her Prius. Oh, her Prius. Okay. I like, <laughs> like you just busted the ring out and you. Yeah. But I shouldn't. Even, I mean, it was like a pre. Was it on your C, cock? Which I did hated. you just like a cock ring? It probably. wasn't a cock ring. <laughs> did she see it coming? No. So it was six months in. Wait, really? Wait, no. I think she did because you don't just propose to someone out of the blue because that's kind of rude. And how long were you married for? Three or four years. I, how many of those years would you say were out. positive and that you really had? It's like half and of? half. And was there fighting or just not into each other? There's anything? like arguing. No, because we were into each other. Like we had sex while separated. Like that wasn't the issue, it was more like just arguing. Arguing. Like I'm just not someone you wanna argue with. If like, yeah, I'm just I like can't a, imagine you being argumentative. I can. I can. Yeah. No. I think you're, uh. I think you dig deep too. Like I think you cut deep. Yeah, I was, yeah, exactly. Like in fights, like I would say things that were so mean, she would be like, oh, I should be the only person you're not that mean to. And in my head, I'm like, but it's funny and it doesn't matter. I'm like funny. on her side. <laughs> well, I I just feel like, and you know what I'm thinking? No, she, Do you know what I'm thinking? I think she's I right. fuck you up in a fight. Yes! I could fuck you up in yes! a fight. What, you and me? If we were arguing, we I have could fought. destroy you. Yeah, but it's never real. I we've never gotten in a real fight. When, if you've ever taken me seriously, I'm always kidding. I've been but we've never been in a real fight. Annie Never, is probably yeah. like one of my only matches in a fight. Ooh, mm. sexual tension. Are we back to Carlos having <laughs> oh, a girl? Oh my God. We <laughs> circled back all Remember, the way around. Remember, what did he say about my cycles. ass that one time? <laughs> when did it, what did he say about my ass that one time we were on the hike? I forgot. What? Wait, but yeah. You remember. Like it was a, yeah. He like it, we said something about, I think he said perfect. I don't know. It was something. Juicy or something. <laughs> perfect Maybe or I was juicy wearing or juicy, the Maybe I was wearing juicy pants though. <laughs> Carlos, were you devastated? Or were you in acceptance? I was pretty when great. I was dating Todd. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was really upset and sad, and I knew that it was right because I was mostly sad about losing my dogs. Mm, and that's a huge consideration. That really was, but for me, it was more like, wait a second, I just got out of being married. I just turned like thirty-one or something, like. This I got this may cool new do. Fun. I got this cool new hairdo. Yeah, I was never worried about you. I'm ready to go slay puss with this long <laughs> hair. Did you, this did you go to the wedding? Yes, I went Esther to the was wedding. There. Was it a big wedding? Normal size? It was like a good size and wedding. She, but she didn't like you. She did not like me. Why? Like how how she didn't Which like Which is you. a bad sign though to not like your Ooh. funny friend. I think a big red flag is not liking, like if you're the girl, not liking the guy's like best girlfriend or whatever. Like mm. if you're dating me, if you've yeah. already you come like into the relationship with this girlfriend, like I can yeah. understand being a little weary if someone gets new, a new absolutely. female friend, friend yes. and that you're like, all right, well, you're giving like the energy to them that you should be giving to this relationship. Right. I had that in that relationship. I was friend. I was like becoming friends with this girl, Ali Siegel, who was like real, who's like funny on Twitter, who um, yeah, Esther knows. And like my ex-wife was really upset about that. And that was like, a big red flag for me because I was like, yo, this is like a writer girl. Like, it doesn't mean. Were you attracted to her though? Of course. Yeah. See, yeah. Then it, she, just cares? She, <laughs> just, she just read you right. Yeah. 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 And I think that um, there are ways to be friends with women and not make them feel what she was feeling, I think. Mm -hmm. I just would never, if someone's like married, if a guy's married or something, like, Definitely at this age, like I would never not like befriend his wife yeah, equally. I always am like, can I come to your house for dinner? Or like, I never want to like be like a surprise to the wife. Like right. I feel like I only hung out with you guys like once or twice. And it just, I felt like I was, I feel Monitored. bad talking about this person, but I feel like I was, I don't remember perfectly, but I feel like I was trying. 
and she, it just got the vibe like she just didn't want to know me at all. And I was like, okay. That's well, also like sometimes it's got to be hard. Like if you're in a relationship, like I remember yeah, I, my ex-boyfriend before we started dating when we were just friends, he would be like dating these girls and we just got along so well. Like we would just be laughing and we were best friends. So it's like, so then they're like, wait, why are you having like more fun with her? Mm. Yeah. And it was just like, so maybe it was that. You guys just have a better rapport than you had with your wife. But of course I have a better rapport with Esther. I've known her for so much longer. Right. And yeah. she's funny. And we were it's in a like, friend group together. And yeah. Yeah. But no I will girl say I this. date will be funnier than like you guys or anything. So mm. like. I'll say this. Good luck this. finding her. I. um. So you are gay? <laughs> when, <laughs> when I first started dating Dave. <laughs> I was very much prob. I was. I shouldn't judge your ex-wife because I was like that with Dave. Like he didn't even have female friends, but if he did, I would have like. I would be responsible for their deaths. Like I would, <laughs> it would be bad. So I don't judge her for. I that. had in college a guy who I was like who was. But like she really was hotter friends. than me, so it's like, what are you? What is this? Yeah, no. I had I had a I had a, a guy I was dating in college who he was like really close with this one girl, and it wasn't even like I was mad. I was just like, date. Yeah. Like date each other. What if you like, know why there doesn't make any sense you wouldn't be dating? They're both like good looking people. They like loved hanging out with each other. Like they were just each other's speed. Like I just was like this thing that came in that didn't match mm. anything. And I was like, I just I, date. Have some, I have some goss for you. What? There is a girl that you know who I absolutely have no respect for, even to this day. I'll tell you why. In the beginning of me and Bobby's relationship, the first year, he didn't really understand um, what would hurt me, what would not hurt me, and what was inappropriate. Or maybe he did and he just didn't. He like, was trying to test you maybe. He was trying like, to like test yeah. me. And this girl we know in common, um, they would always have this like flirtatious banter. And I'm like, okay, you have, you're a comedian. You, I, I hope to God you have female friends. <laughs> and uh, this is the, the exact type of woman I really have trouble like feeling any kind of like warm feelings towards even in my most like pragmatic state of mind i'm like wait no you are a disrespectful bitch straight up also and false just not a real thing yeah in uh about two years into our relationship or a year and a half into our relationship they always had a friendly banter and bobby was always like you know um she's just a friend she's just a friend but she would really cross the line like on texting and say things like you're a king like <gasps> wish we had you know wish we had a shot before blah blah no. blah what? and then but then wow. bobby and i one of the reasons why I could, people don't know this one of the reasons why we broke up early on is because i saw a string of messages basically saying i i want to raw dog you shut up to her why and I was hoping it was cut to him, to her, like, not her to him. Dude, please cut to her. I don't know how raw dog Raw <laughs> dog. Bobby, you sick fuck. And this is like Bobby, like this, he was also, not. Also, I never imagined Bobby in a condom. So <laughs> <he's> not, <laughs> like, look at your messy car. Like, how would he stick a condom on, right? And, um, you know, like, this is early on in a relationship. A lot, I tell you this much. Bobby put me through emotional psychological hell he's the dead first to all of us two fucking Every years of my relationship of us has had the scariest weirdest yeah i hung in there like Bobby. a fucking soldier you guys because when i would get the text because he lent me his old phone that was still it was like his bat <laughs> phone and i was like why are you doing he's so dumb about these things so his messages would still pop up and i was reading it on the phone that i was <laughs> borrowing about him wanting to raw dog this girl <laughs> that's so funny and this is what i would do i would go up to him i would say hey this isn't okay and i'll be crying this hurts me he's like i didn't write that <laughs> what? i didn't he write that i didn't write that off it's so cute and then i <laughs> fell into this like deep depression and how he remembers it, he was like i knew that i had like broken you because there was one time oh. when i went into the second bedroom of our condo he's like i went in there and you were just like staring at yourself in the mirror in the dark and I knew that you were deliberating, like, what the fuck am I still doing here? And I was like, honestly, I was probably listening to Amy Mann. I was like, I probably was, like, really like in the... Peter Pan. And then we finally had this big blowout over Ikea dishes. And we tell people, like, yeah, we had this... We, we broke up once because it was over Ikea dishes, but it was over the fact that he had such poor fucking manners when it came to, like, not making me you know feel... You so funny? ...prioritized. Like, he would go to Canada and he would randomly post pictures with a girl in like a, a photo booth. And I'm like, who is this? Oh my God. <laughs> and he'd be on a date. Like a romantic, yes. So I have a similar thing. 
Um, when I was 21 and I first started dating, I noticed there was a girl at the comedy store who every time I was around Tony and everyone knew we were dating, she would touch him. She would touch his arm. She would touch his chest and laugh. And I remember, I, and I, keep in mind, I was 21. I just dropped out of school. Like I hadn't had adult things. I hadn't had like adult interactions yeah. yet. And I just remember feeling like, what is she doing? Like she, this person knows that's my boyfriend. Why are you touching my boyfriend in front of me? What's the point of that? Mm -hmm. And it made me so mad. And I was like, I, I don't like this person now. I'll never, I would never do that already. Well, but, but she's also Esther, just not a, she's not a girl's she, girl doesn't like you either <laughs> no this is the same girl that when i got past at the comedy store by the way when i got past at the comedy store i got past right away i did not know what the comedy store was i remember and we're so only special. cool girl only cool girls get that that's awesome so i came in from new york i didn't know that the comedy store was like this. everyone was like who's this girl she just got passed overnight or whatever like, i what walked is it? in one audition immediately was passed and i fucking was good but i think the reason i got passed is because i didn't i had no pressure on me i just thought it was a regular audition for a regular club like i was like mm. whatever I was like, of course I get passed. So I got passed. I didn't even know it was a thing, okay? And when you say this a girl, thing, it's like a, there are a lot of people that work there, hang out mm -hmm. there, that they're just waiting for their shot to be passed. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a big deal to these people. It Sorry. takes a long time. And, you know, sometimes <laughs> the cream rises. Um, <laughs> the mint chocolate chip ice cream rises. The spray tan rises. <laughs> but anyway, so... This girl was passed already. Okay, so then I meet another girl who is a long gone mutual-ish friend of all of ours. Um, and she was like, yeah, when you first got passed, this girl was like, let's go to the comedy store and watch Annie bomb. I'm like, who oh, is this no. bitch? But I never, but it was fine. I don't, who well, it's like, you know so obviously and so clearly that that was that person's insecurity yes. talking and it had nothing to do with you. But at, but at the time, if I heard someone say that about me, I'd just be like, it was Why just so weird. Like, who are what? you? Mm -hmm. But also, who knows? I probably bombed. Well, probably. <laughs> but probably also very nice to your face. Otherwise, like that girl who Bobby wanted to raw dog. Yeah. I would see her at like um, CAA events and parties. And she would be, she would just, you could tell that she had done something wrong. Because she was just like, you're so beautiful. Let's hang out and have a drink. I'm oh. like. Bitch, I read it all. I really wanted to say that. <laughs> I'm like, I know all about it. You know, like. This, um. This other one we were talking about, she would always come up. She'd be like, you unfollowed mm -hmm. me. I'd be like, yes, I unfollowed you on Instagram and I'll do it again. She's like, follow me. I'm like, I'm just going to unfollow you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just unfollowing. You guys, you know, we can never make fun of Carlos's bald head anymore, right? Why? Why? Well, thankfully, we don't have an HR department, but it's considered sexual harassment in the no, workplace. No, we've sexually harassed him. We do sexually harass him. That's But in the England, job. the courts are ruling that it's sexual harassment. Why? Because it's mean. And it puts them down. Listen, no be mean on the internet. I don't want anyone to forget. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. petition guys, no be mean. So, <laughs> but if it's in real life, it's okay. Look at this calling <laughs> calling men bald counts as sexual harassment. Why? A UK judge, a UK judge rules. Wait, can I explain to you why that's disrespectful to bald headed men? Yes, it's saying that it's make that it's unsexy to be bald. <laughs> yeah, it's Jay like it's sexualizing the hair on your head. And the it's number one UK freaking action star is Jason Statham, the fucking king of bald men. He probably is behind this. I, just, <laughs> <laughs> well, like, I won't what? be bullied one more guys, time. Let's hear from the the person. The baldest person we've ever met. What? How do you feel if you were called bald? Do you feel sexually harassed? I don't feel sexually harassed. I just feel harassed. <laughs> yeah, but you're asking for you're you have the most obviously bald. Hair. What if I say something like, I want to come on oh your bald head? <laughs> is that sexual harassment? I want to see you queef I think it at is technically, but I don't care. I want to <laughs> see you queef at him and his hair like quiver. <laughs> <laughs> Carlos, I love that you're wearing a star face pimple patch. Oh, I think thank that's you. Cool. I had one. Oh, that's a pimple patch. Yeah. It's a very, very cute place to have a pimple. Because then you can just turn it into a mole, really, which it's was what we used to do in the 90s. Eyeliner. Suspiciously a cute place. Is that <laughs> a real pimple or is that just a... It it's was just a red like mark. The pimple well, comes off when he takes it off. It's it's drawn on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't want to put it like right here, like mm. for the recordings. I didn't want to draw attention or anything, but I'm going to put one right there after it. One right here. Wow. Yeah, this is really cool. interesting. <laughs> you want to okay. eat the water bug, Annie? Yeah. I mean, I don't want to, but. I don't wanna, I wanna, I don't All right, I'm just doing it because I said I would. I don't want to. 
Kalila's not looking. Oh my god. I'm not eating the whole thing. Okay. Who eats can, these? Can, can you know who... can you show the camera, Annie, but not me? What? I know what it's gonna taste like. They all fucking taste the same, and they don't taste good. Yeah. <laughs> Real size. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, I just like to get through my fears. I think I come out on. Oh don't my look. god! Don't look. Oh my god! Oh my! <laughs> don't look. What I can are you smell doing? It. Don't eat it. Is she really, Kalila? Who eats these? Who eats these? Can you tell me? Because I is... feel like if I don't look at it and someone just shove it in my mouth, I can swallow it. But if, if I get <laughs> if right. I get a visual, all right, all right. It's just I like want dick. a drum roll. I want it. Wait, giant... it's people in Southeast Asia. Okay. Sometimes they're boiled or fried. Okay. Hold on, hold on. Let me film this. Uh, can I close my eyes and maybe someone can just shove it in my mouth? I'll shove it in something. Do you want me to? Here, yeah, are I'll you going to shove it in her mouth? No, no, no. Annie, eat it first. What do I get? Do I get a reward? Um, my life's already a reward, guys. Every day is my birthday. There's perfect. really nothing I need. No, oh, she's doing it. Oh, my God. She's biting it like it's a fucking... Oh, I'm my God. The thing. crunch. I'm going to throw up. <laughs> oh, fucking gaggy. I'm fucking gagging. Oh my god, it's crunching like a Dorito. <laughs> oh, I don't like the sounds, you guys. <laughs> the sounds are not great for me. Okay. Annie. Taste-wise, Annie, just give me a rating. Is it swallowed? Yeah, uh, dude. Stale. You're disgusting, you fucking freak. Okay. Ah! 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 What the hell just happened? Ah! The wall! <laughs> what happened? She spit it out and she burped it up and it's in the wall. Just a piece fell out. Wait. Yeah. Okay, wait. Why did you know it was a boy? Wait, Kalila, keep your eyes closed. I'm gonna put some in here. No! <laughs> wait, 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 Esther, I don't trust you. Esther, I do not trust you. Carlos? Yeah. Carlos, here's, yeah. here's, Here, um, I, I want to be a big girl. I want to be a big girl. Hang on, hang on, <laughs> hang on. You guys, tell me it's something. Tell me what okay. it, tell me, okay. It's gonna, it's gonna... Uh. Also, I don't want to swallow it. Is it okay if I just crunch it? I think you need to no, swallow it. But you didn't swallow it either. I swallowed the whole thing. One piece that I spit out. Don't oh, crunch okay. it, don't crunch it. Uh, Esther, are you gonna be the one to put it in my mouth? Yeah. yeah, Esther's gonna do it. Wait, hang on. Esther's the most trustworthy. Just <laughs> wait, no, we just have to do it like the vaccine. You just gotta go. Just keep your eyes closed. Well, you think I was afraid of the vaccine? Or a shot. <laughs> had six boosters. <laughs> All right, hang on, Esther. Okay. Okay, how are you gonna put it in? Don't worry, she's just gonna just do it. open you her mouth and nurse. just go for it. Tell me it's something else. Okay. It's something else. It's a, a scorpion. scorpion. Just say it's a scorpion. It's a scorpion. It's a scorpion. It's, it's, a scorpion. Just a scorpion. it's just a scorpion. It's just a scorpion, you guys. It's just a scorpion. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> Good bitch. Good bitch. You raped her. That's rape what you did to her. <laughs> I just sexually assaulted you. Math, you. you sexually yeah. assaulted her and you deserve to get hurt. Wait, Carlos, delete the tapes. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I opened my mouth and I was almost I was gonna crunch down on your lips. Do you you did, that? you bit me. <laughs> Esther, careful. I, that was the most rejected I've ever felt because you didn't know it was gonna be me kissing you and I did and you're like, ew, ew, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, did she peek? <laughs> and I was like, she must be peeking. I just, Kalila, I don't want you to be too scared, but part of it came out of Annie's mouth and is now on the wall. Do you wanna see it? <laughs> <laughs> it? It just looks like tar. Oh my God, I'm like, at least I got a kiss. <laughs> you had a bite. You had a bite. I loved it. I feel accomplished. I feel like I got through something. It took me a week to really get myself worked yeah. up for it. I can't believe you came back strong and ready to do it. I was ready it. to do it. How did just, you get yourself there? I would have done it last week, but I wasn't supposed to eat before my colonic. Mm. <laughs> Are you sure? Cockroaches don't count? <laughs> I don't know. How are you guys feeling right now? I feel great. I, I feel know. proteined. I feel... I feel like I'm back in a childlike state of terror where they used to fly into my hair and I would have to crunch that your is juices. Really... They would eat at my shins. 
It would be in the middle of my textbooks. I wonder what it is. You know, what? here's what I think, guys. The my next tattoo. My next tattoo is going to be of a cockroach. Okay. It's going to be a cockroach, a pigeon, and a rat. Can you get it going into your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> I think that that's, I, I think ultimately I have so much respect for them. The fact that they can live without their heads for 20 days. The fact that they <laughs> probably live through like prehistoric times. The fact that they just really don't know how to die. That's um, really sweet of you. Also, roaches are um, Josh think, Potter's fans. He calls them roaches. Isn't that cute that it's roaches and slugs? Oh. Well, um, my heart rate, whatever happens to your body when bad things happen, that's what I'm going through right now. I don't feel good. Um, so I think that's time to go home. I feel great. We started out with you kind of not feeling good. And we got back And there. we got back to it. And now I feel very good. Her feeling bad does make me feel good. That's why we're good <laughs> friends. <laughs> we balance each other out. Clyla, thank you for being brave. And, and he was the bravest one. I see No, you. but I already was going to be. Are you do you feel sexually harassed by me? Um, no. If advantage. I had I known, I would have puckered up and give you a full one. Well, next time. Well, baldy, baldy cakes <laughs> over there. How did baldy cakes feel? I don't feel sexually harassed, just harassed. But bald it doesn't <laughs> you want it. You would cut if you didn't want to get attention for your bald, weird looking head, you would shave the nice little crispy. This head. is like what rape is saying. You, like you wanted it. You asked no, for it. No, he is asking for the beating. <laughs> Why do you keep it long and scraggly? Because I had it shaved for so long. I just wanted to like rebel against that. And right. Keep, rebel yeah. against what society thinks is attractive. <laughs> and that's how you know, and he's calling me unattractive. I'm getting good. you. I can't wait for the next. We have to do another live because the wigs that I have in store for you, oh, <laughs> the, they're wild. The wigs. The I mean, wig I am budget. like, the wig budget is, by the way, guys, the wig budget is more than any other budget on this show. <laughs> I'm dropping cash for this. You it. think the Celines are expensive? <laughs> wait till you see these wigs. You guys, thank you so much. Today has been a wild ride and we really... Hope that you comment and subscribe and show support and share our show with your friends. We want to grow and take over all the other podcasts. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Do you Wait, want us to do it? I think that I want to be brave like Annie. I just need you to tell me it's something else. If so, then Annie, I'm this is all you. Okay. I, I cannot see it. Just shove it in my mouth. Once okay. it's I, in, I, you just want to finish Carlos it. or Esther. Actually, actually I, I trust you, Esther. I feel like Annie would just like lob it inside my throat. I actually physically can't fucking touch it. I'll do it. I can do it. I can oh do my it. God. <laughs> I'm going to do it the cute side first where it's not as gross. <sighs> it's just. Well, don't say sides or what it is. <laughs> yeah. Okay, just, it's, it's, um, it's a scorpion tail. Um, tarantula. It's a, it's a piece of beef jerky? Uh, <laughs> mm, I love beef jerky. Good. Yeah, it's, it's just jerky. Annie. It's just jer jerky. Listen, Joe Rogan, mind over, ma mind over matter. Mind over matter. Okay, this is fear factor. You're going to win a million dollars, okay? A million dollars? Yeah. <laughs> Annie, right, just don't shove it in. Just let me I'm just. Gonna, okay, I'm placing it in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> Open your mouth. Right? And just crunch. Open oh wide now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god, I'm going home. I'm fucking going home. I don't want to do this anymore. Oh my anymore. god. This is not comedy. This is abuse. Okay, hold on, I'm not done. Go ahead. You're not done. You're sick. I'm not done. I'm not You're done. Sick. You're sick. Fuck. Tell them your mom's been I'm not done. done. Eat it, oh racehorse. God. Eat it. Oh my God, it's just in here. Eat it, racehorse. I didn't hear you cry. Bobby's dick. Ah, no, let me touch it. It's the size of the same size. Okay, hang You're on. You're like crying. I know. I put your right hand down. Now open your mouth. It's a wide. scorpion. It's a scorpion. It's just a it's scorpion, just a scorpion <laughs> from the island. This is like not fun. <laughs> Okay. It's, it's a scorpion. Bye. It's a scorpion. It's a scorpion. 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 <coughs> you did it. You did it. You did it. You did it. <laughs> you did it. Everyone's puking. I'm fine. I don't know. <laughs> what you just did is. Can I tell you something? Something's really nauseous. weird with you. Why did you want to do it? 
you're fucked up. I think it's because I'm so terrified of it that like, yes, I want to wait. The fear. I want to wait out. I really want to wait out. They've just terrorized my life for so long. Oh, and I'm not kidding you. Like, <laughs> they're they're called water bugs because they make water come out of your eyes. No, they're fucking cockroaches. Let's just call it what it is. Oh.